Hey, what's up everybody? Hey, thanks for watching my videos again. And in this video, I wanna talk about why it is good for you to screw up every once in a while, as, especially as a pre-medical student or a med student or even a resident. Now, we're always gonna screw up. We don't want to. And a lot of people think, oh my God, I don't wanna, you know, try X because I don't wanna screw up. And then if I screw up, then I'm a loser and a failure and it'll spiral into oblivion and I'm a mess and so people don't take chances but here's the thing is the more chances you take right the more you can grow so for example people that learn language the fastest are the ones that are not embarrassed to screw up those people have been shown to just go ahead and try whatever you know they think the language is and then as they get corrected they get corrected faster and they can correct themselves faster and they are better and faster than other people that are not able to uh, kind of you know, take those risks so let me tell you a story awesome story one of my buddies was a transplant fellow he was in, so this is a liver transplant and what they were doing is uh, taking the organ, the new organ from the patient, it's, it's placed in a cooler. So first, you know, when you go to get a new organ, usually you fly someplace away from where the patient is. Uh, you go and take that organ out of the patient. Uh, you put it in a cooler. Actually, you flush it with a special solution to preserve the organ, and then you put it in, in some ice in, in a cooler, sterilely. Then that's when you bring it back to the recipient. Uh, then you prepare the organ kind of what we call the back table. Uh, so the recipient's body is open. You take the organ, you prepare it, you flush it again, you flush it with the solution. Uh, you make sure all the veins and arteries are properly kind of sized. And then you take the organ from the back table and then put it you know, into the patient. And so my friend was, as a fellow, was doing the back table. And then when it was all done, they were gonna you know, take the organ and put it onto the patient. Well, of course, you gotta take it from one, to one table to the other table, and when he did that, as you can imagine, I don't know if you've ever held any organs, they're slippery. You know where I'm going with this, right? So, he takes this liver and goes to hand it off from the back table to the OR table, and it slips out of his hands and drops on it. Brand new liver, well, not brand new, but out of a recipient, or out of a donor, sterile, right, the whole time, and now it's on the operating room floor. What do you do? Well, you don't know what to do, right? If you've never done that before, you have no goddamn idea what to do. So they basically said, okay, let's pick it up. We're not gonna throw it away, it's a freaking organ. So they wash it off, saline, maybe some betadine, I can't remember what he told me, and they put it back in the patient, in the, in the recipient. And, you know, they watched to see what happened, and basically, the. The organ was fine. The patient never got an infection, no real problems uh, came of it. So obviously he wasn't planning on doing that. And it wasn't like he was tossing the organ, like making a big risk. Maybe he was being a little too lax with his thought process and obviously with his fingers, right? So really what he came to understand is what would happen if a sterile organ was dropped on the floor? Do you now have to throw that away? And the answer is no. Now he knows for the rest of his career as a transplant surgeon, kind of how much punishment, almost, an organ can take and still function and still not be infected. It was a good lesson for him, it was a good lesson for me, indirectly, because I learned that, you know, sterile doesn't mean sterile. When we talk about sterile in the operating room, uh, we, we mean as little bacteria as possible, as bacterial load, and it's not really that there's no bacteria. The body can really clear a, a significant amount of bacteria, but it, it has to go above a certain threshold of number of bacteria before the body can't clear it and you end up with an infection. So my point with the organ, uh, you know, dropping the organ thing is that he was finding kind of the, the maximum amount of risk he could take with an organ. Uh, and, and even there's probably more risk you could take with it because that one did okay. My point is, is that what you need to do is when you're a pre-med or a medical student, you do need to take some risk because those people that don't take risk grow the slowest, okay? So now, now he could see in a different operation if the field was contaminated, say you accidentally you know, brush your hand up against someone's shoulder, you can say that's contamination. And then when you put your hand back in the, in the patient and that is contaminated now, is that going to cause an infection? Like, most likely not. And now, indirectly, I know that as well. That's not what I practice, but I certainly understand 
kind of a different kind of limits now. What you need to do is when you're a med student and pre-med student is take those risks and you know make those big leaps. Like if, if you think there's something that's way too hard for you or that's gonna be too many things at one time, you should just say yes, and I've talked about this in other videos. If you you know kind of try and max yourself out and go, oh my god, like this is way too much. I've I bit off way more than I can chew. Just go ahead and try that and take those risks because you might find out that that's not too much. You didn't bite up more than you can chew. And the next time you can take even bigger bites, right? Does that make any sense? I kind of think you have to have that mentality going into medicine and definitely helps when you're doing pre-med to look at something and say, I can do this. Because I think one of the big problems I had when I was younger was that I would be super scared of a class or super scared of a professor or something like that and, and say, you know, I, I just don't think I can do all these classes together. And you put myself in a negative mindset and, and talk myself into not doing that. But if you look at something and you're like, all right, I can do this, I'm gonna, I'm gonna bite off all this and I'm gonna max myself out, I'm gonna do as much as I can and take that risk. Now, you may, you may not do it, you may say, to yourself, oh my god, this is too much, and I did bite up more than I could chew, but at least you know that for next time. But if you don't, you, most of the time you're surprised, you surprise yourself, and you can you can actually do way more than you think. Actually, Navy SEALs always talk about how um, when we think we're maxed out, we're really probably only about 40 to 50% maximum. We have maybe 50 to 60% left in us, you know, like our, our, our reserve. So, that's an interesting concept to think about. I hope you like this video. That's about it. Uh, a little short story there for you. Hey, thank you guys for watching these videos. Like, subscribe, comment, share, all that stuff. And I'll see you in the next video.